cracks in the earth with the power to divide nations, literally gateways to hell caused by collapse earth, and so many more insanely large faults that exist on the earth. What's your biggest fault? Let me know in the comments and let's get into it. First up, we have the Eastern Africa Rift, Earth's largest crack, other than your plumbers. It actually threatens to split the continent of Africa in half. While the crack, surge, fissure, whatever you want to call it, was initiated about 22 million years ago, recently, in 2005, things got a little bit more noticeable, as the crack appeared in the deserts of Ethiopia. The rupture is currently around 4,000 miles long and 30 to 40 miles wide. That's 6,400 kilometers in length and 48 to 64 kilometers in width. Oh, and it's growing as well, expanding at least one inch per year, leading scientists to believe that there is a strong possibility that one day this rift will cause the continent of Africa to split, leading to a new sixth ocean. So, you know, if you've got any name suggestions for this new ocean, leave them down below. The rift was created by tectonic activity, two plates that get pushed apart and create a crack in the Earth's crust, which probably caused a lot of panic back in the day, but we know a lot more about this now than we did then. So instead, this particular rift is still causing panic. I mean, it's a giant split in the Earth. What do you expect? Next up, is it hot in here or is it just the Infernal Gateway? It's the gateway? Okay, I figured. The Infernal Gateway is a crater, so like a crack, but circular, and absolutely massive too, with a diameter of approximately 70 meters, 229 feet. It lies in the heart of Turkmenistan and is often affectionately referred to as the door to hell. Why? Because it's filled with fire and brimstone. But although it looks like some kind of magma chamber, it's it's actually not, and while it wasn't necessarily man-made, man did have a significant role in its formation. The crater was formed in 1971 during a Soviet drilling operation. Workers who had been drilling for natural gas were shocked when the ground around them suddenly gave way to the massive crater full of methane gas. To prevent the spread of the gas, scientists decided to set the infernal gateway on fire, expecting it to burn for maybe a few weeks max. But over five decades later, here we are. The crater is still on fire, and because of this, it's become a massive tourist attraction. Would you go there? Next up, we have the Dead Sea Transform, which despite the name has nothing to do with the ocean. It does involve a lake though, the confusingly named Dead Sea Lake. So. Where does the name come from? The salt. The Dead Sea has a salt content so high that no life can survive in its waters and therefore its ecosystem isn't. This salt content, while unable to support life, has supported quite the slew of tourists each and every year who flock to the lake to experience the therapeutic value of its waters as well as the mud surrounding them. So back to the cracks, because the Dead Sea has one, a big one, that runs right through the middle of the lake and separates its African plate from its Arabian one. There are other faults or cracks that run along the bottom of the lake as well, running all the way up from the top down to the bottom, spanning 1,000 kilometers. 621 miles. Next up, whose fault? San Andreas Fault. What is the San Andreas Fault? Well, it's a crack, obviously, and a rather massive one at that. It follows along the coastline of California, starting in Cape Medicino and going all the way down to the Mexican border. The fault is created by the sliding boundary of the Pacific and North American tectonic plates. Basically, as they slide against each other, the ground is pulled apart creating the fault. While many people believe that, like the Southern African Rift, this fault has the power to pull the country apart, that is not the case. This fault came to be 28 million years ago, and in the past 10 million years, it has moved maybe 30 to 50 millimeters, which is nothing compared to Africa's one inch per year. That being said, this 800 mile, 1,287 kilometer long, 10 mile, 16 kilometer deep, crack has been considered dangerous due simply to the fact that it exists in an incredibly populated area. And the plates that move below the earth have been known to cause some significant seismic activity, aka big old earthquakes. 
Next up, we have the Denali Fault, located in Seattle's Lake Union in Alaska. A fairly new crack that occurred on November 3rd of 2002, and it wasn't subtle either. The fault was created by a 7.9 magnitude earthquake that caused the waters of the lake to turn up and slosh around hard enough to knock houseboats right off their anchoring points. The earthquake began at 1.12 p.m. and lasted between 1.5 to 3 minutes, depending on the exact area. But the the waves it caused in Seattle's Lake Union lasted for almost half an hour, meaning this thing was strong and powerful. And it wasn't even the only earthquake to occur that year in the area. Less than one month prior, on October 23rd, a 6.7 magnitude earthquake also struck. The two quakes prompted scientists to survey the area, and they discovered that it had been drastically changed by the events. Surprise, surprise. A massive fault, 1,200 miles or 1,931 kilometers long, now stretched across not just the span of the lake, but most of Alaska and even some of Western Canada. Next on the list today, we're going back to my roots, well, half of them at least, I'm talking about Scotland. Beyond castles, the highlands, bagpipes, and the Loch Ness Monster, Scotland is also known for having a pretty large fault. The Great Glen Fault, that is. The Great Glen is an active fault, which means it's actively growing, which is somewhat concerning considering the fact that it can already be seen from space. The crack occurred in the Scottish Highlands due to glacial erosion that took place more than 10,000 years ago. And its formation also formed a series of deep lakes, including none other than the Loch Ness, home to the previously mentioned Loch Ness Monster, or Nessie if you're nasty. Janet Jackson. Anyways, the fault is approximately 65 miles long, 104.6 kilometers, but as I said, it's active, so that will probably end up changing. Next on our list, we have the North Anatolian Fault. The North Anatolian Fault stretches across northern Turkey, as the name would imply. And it is a strike slip in nature, meaning that it is a vertical or nearly vertical fracture in the earth, meaning that the crack was created by two blocks of the earth moving horizontally across one another rather than up or down, which would result in a normal or reverse fault. The North Anatolian Fault is 1,500 kilometers long or 932 miles, and it runs along the boundary between the Eurasian Plate and the smaller Anatolian Plate, again hence the name, but the movement of the fault isn't controlled by either one of these plates. It's actually controlled by the much larger Arabian Plate, which explains why the crack was caused by horizontal sliding, they're being pushed, rather than the two moving up and down against each other. Next up we have Kamoa Moa, Hawaii's Fisher Eruption Site. Unlike the last one, this crack is the result of underground magma chambers. In 2011, magma caused the grounds of Kamoamoa to crack and separate as hot lava spewed out from below. Two cracks were actually formed on the island that day, but it's kind of hard to judge their size because the lava spewing out keeps solidifying around the fissures, but at any given time, they are at least one kilometer, 3,280 feet. What's particularly interesting about these cracks though is that they are actually causing the island to grow and expand. Each time the island splits and the gap is filled with lava, the land mass increases, making parts of Kamoamoa's grounds the youngest and newest grounds on Earth. Not only that, but eventually the lava gives rise to fertile soil, meaning that while it might seem like a harsh environment now, one day the land will be able to support a thriving ecosystem. Up next, Frontal Thrust is a name I never thought I would get paid to say, but here we are. The Himalayan Frontal Thrust, also known as the Main Frontal Thrust, is a geological fault located in the Himalayas, duh, along the boundary of the Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates. Like the Glen Fault and the Eastern African Rift, this thing is also active, which is kind of concerning considering the fact that it already has a length of about 2,400 kilometers, 1,491 miles, and because it's active, it contributes to a lot of seismic activity in the area. Like a lot. The area on average experiences over 500 earthquakes per year. But luckily, only three major earthquakes have occurred in the last century, ranging from 7.8 to 8.5 in magnitude. But even still, the fault was caused way before any of that, when the Indian tectonic plate decided to do its own frontal thrust and push itself under the Eurasian plate along the Himalaya. But we're gonna move on now 
Which brings me to my last point today, the Rios Grande Rift, not the Ariana Grande Rift, which was formed by an extension of Earth's crust, which is a great example of extension tectonics. Basically what that means is that instead of two tectonic plates pushing into or along one another, they actually pull apart and feature a down faulted expression, which looks a bit like a canyon, but it's different since canyons are not caused by cracks in the earth, but rather they are formed by erosion. Anyways, back to Rios Grande, which runs from central Colorado in the north all the way down to southern Mexico, and pretty much cuts New Mexico right down the middle on its way down. Speaking of New Mexico, scientists believe that the Rios Grande Rift has had a rather significant geological effect on the state, specifically in the volcanic category. The seismic activity that comes from the rift has led to the formation of the world's largest and youngest caldera, which is basically a lake formed in a crater from a collapsed volcano. But what's really wild here is the fact that even though this particular volcano, Valles Caldera, collapsed after a super eruption that took place 1.2 million years ago, scientists still believe that it's dormant, not extinct. Talk about resilient. All right, you guys, that is our video for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Pull your pants up, look out for cracks. I've been your host, Hannah Thompson, and I will see you in our next video. Mm -hmm.